Welcome to EPG Partshala. In today's module, we are going to discuss on energy conservation principles and approaches. Energy has become the basic requirement of our daily life. Backbone, it is the backbone of present day civilization. It is an indispensable component of industrial production, employment generation, economic growth, our environment and our comfort. But today, the energy demand is far, far higher than the supply. So it needs to be conserved. And the need for this conservation of energy is increasing rapidly due to population explosion, increasing energy demand in the domestic, industrial and transportation sector, as well as the increasing prices and the fossil fuel depletion in the future also results or leading to the energy conservation need. This energy and development are interrelated. In order to achieve the sustainable growth rate, it is necessary to maintain a balance between the energy input and the energy output. In our country, the fossil fuel reserves are very much limited and major portion of our currency is used in importing the petroleum products and the bills are huge. Our coal reserves are expected to be exhausted in the coming time and our energy consumption is higher than this energy production. So in today's module, we are going to discuss on what is the meaning of this energy conservation, what are the benefits, principles and approaches of energy conservation. Let's start with the energy consumption in India in the various sectors. You can see that in residential, it is around 10%. In transportation sector, it is 22% and 5% in agriculture and in industrial usage is around 49% with others at 14%. So you can see that the energy consumption is higher in the industrial sector followed by the transportation sector. Now what is this energy conservation? It implies reduction in energy consumption without compromising on quality or lowering the quality of production. This means that by reducing losses and wastages as well as by increasing the efficiency, it is possible to increase the production from a given amount of input. The energy conservation is the method of reducing amount of energy usage for same quality and quantity of work. It can be achieved by using efficient methods of the energy use. What are the objectives of this energy conservation? The objectives are reduction in energy imports, reduction in the pollution, reduction in carbon emission, improvement in the environmental quality, health quality improvement and sustainable development. What is the need for the conservation, energy conservation in India? Not only in India, in the world also there is a need for conserving the energy. The energy resources are inadequate as India has about 1% of world's energy resources but we have 16% of world population and 80% 80 of the fuel use is from these non-renewable energy sources that cannot be used again and cannot be renewed. Since the available conventional energy resources are fast depleting and the cost of energy is increasing, it is highly important that measures should be taken to conserve the energy. The energy conservation is cost effective and short term or immediate option. It is estimated that 10 to 20 percent energy can be saved without major investment in case suitable measure to conserve energy are taken. Rich and developed countries have to contribute more in energy conservation by reducing their consumption of energy through self-discipline and strict measures. To implement measures for energy, for the energy conservation, some investment has to be made, but this investment is very small compared to energy cost, which may be saved through the conservation. Energy saved or conserved may be considered as energy generated or earned without any cost, and it can be achieved by reducing the energy usage. The prime goal of energy conservation techniques are reduction in the demand, protect and replenish supplies, develop and use alternative energy sources and to clean up the damage from the prior energy process. Energy conservation can be done at various levels. We can reduce energy consumption at home, at industrial level and at workplace. 
what are the benefits of this conservation of energy when usable energy is conserved it is not allowed to be wasted this saving has direct impact on the economy environment and long term availability of the non renewable energy resource energy conservation using energy efficient means will not only reduce the need to create new capacity which require high investment but also result in benefits benefits like environmental aspect in economic benefits depletion of conventional energy sources can be reduced what are the environmental benefits energy utilization process affects the environment to much extent the extent of degradation or pollution of environment depends on energy conservation process the efficiency of technology used for the conservation however it is found that a part of energy in the form of heat escapes to the surrounding in every energy conversion or utilization process hence whenever energy is generated and utilized it is carried out at the expense of adverse environmental effects whenever we are conserving energy we are minimizing this degradation of the environment now the economic aspects or the economic benefits of the energy conservation energy conservation finally led to economic benefits such as reduction in cost of production new job opportunities due to new investment in more efficient energy equipment and technologies the cost of energy forms a significant part of the total cost of the product the cost helps in production of cheaper and better quality products the manufacturer needs to be component to produce quality product at minimum cost to survive in the competitive markets now the reduction in the depletion of conventional energy resources the environmental energy resources or the energy resources are derived from fossil fuels which are non renewable and depleting resources and their consumption is also increasing day by day owing to both depletion and scarcity the prices of conventional energy resources are also rapidly increasing their consumption can be conserved by all means for the future generations so these are the benefits of the energy conservation now what are the principles of energy conservation energy has to be conserved and its expenditure has to be minimized expenditure should be reduced using new and efficient technology avoiding every energy wastage self discipline and recycling of waste so on the basis of these approaches there are various principles of energy conservation these are recycling of waste energy efficient technologies waste heat utilization judicious use of higher grade energy judicious use of energy commodity cogeneration adopting daylight saving time proper housekeeping training of manpower proper operation and maintenance recycling of waste by recycling the waste it is possible to make any product with lesser energy compared to energy required to produce from raw materials recycling can help to save the invisible energy which was used in extraction of fresh material from the source the recycling of waste has three major benefits saving of energy as the total energy needed in recycling process does not require the part of energy needed for extraction of fresh extraction of fresh material from raw source saving energy to be spent on processing for extraction of fresh material from the raw source saving energy to be spent on processing the fresh material as fresh material is not required to be extracted from raw source due to recycling of waste and solving the problem of waste disposal as well as saving of energy required for transportation and disposal of waste for example recycled aluminum cans can be produced with only 6% of energy that is needed to make them from the fresh aluminum ores the second principle is energy efficient technologies modern energy efficient technology should be adopted to replace the existing old energy inefficient technologies or the equipment energy consumption can be reduced to a great extent by adopting energy efficient technologies the third principle is the waste heat utilization waste heat from any industrial process requiring high grade heat 
can be efficiently used for other industrial process that require low grade heat. For example, glass manufacturing which require high grade heat at 1500 degrees Celsius and it has a waste heat at lower temperature of 400 to 500 degrees Celsius. This waste heat can be utilized to generate steam in boiler to run a turbine for the production of electricity thereby conserving the energy. The third principle is judicious use of higher grade energy. The usefulness or financial value of energy is specified by grading of energy. The grading of energy in the descending order is electrical energy, mechanical energy, thermal energy. So the higher grade energy should not be used for any work which can be performed by low grade energy. Electrical energy is the highest grade energy and should not be used for heating purpose as cheap lower grade thermal energy is obtainable by burning of fuel or solar energy can be more judiciously used for heating purpose. The next principle is judicious use of energy commodity. The energy commodity can be cheap or costly. For example, coal and biomass are cheap energy commodities or sources compared to the oil or natural gas which are costly commodities. Hence for heating, it is preferable to use cheaper fuel such as coal instead of oil or gas. Another principle is the cogeneration. In many industrial plants, both electricity and thermal heat are required. In such plants, cogeneration of electrical and thermal energy at a single play should be adopted instead of separate generation of electricity and heat. The cogeneration is economical and it may result in energy saving up to 30 percent. The another principle is the adopting daylight saving time. In summer, daylight saving time can be adopted as done in most of the European countries. The sun rises nearly one hour earlier in summer and time is set one hour ahead as the standard time, thereby increasing the number of useful hours of daylight in a day. This adoption of timing helps in providing extra hours of sunlight in the evenings. Hence, the daily activities of most of the people are finished much earlier. As a result, electricity for lighting is needed for lesser hours, which results in its saving. The next principle is proper housekeeping. Proper housekeeping can be ensured by turning off light and other appliances when not needed and it helps in energy conservation. Next principle is the training of manpower. So the manpower should be trained to adopt the habits and practices to use the machinery and equipment efficiently. The machinery and equipment must be switched off during idle or non-productive time. Proper operation and maintenance. Energy may be lost due to friction or improper insulation. So proper lubrication of moving part can reduce loss of energy due to friction. Proper insulation of devices can prevent heat loss due to conduction and convection to the atmosphere. These are the principles which relate to the energy conservation. Now what are the initiatives taken from the government of India? Government of India enacted the Energy Conservation Act 2001 and this act provides for the institutionalizing and strengthening delivery mechanism for energy efficiency services in the country and the much needed coordination between various entities. And under this act, they have also established Bureau of Energy Efficiency, that is BEE. The mission of Bureau of Energy Efficiency is to develop policy and strategies with a thrust on self-regulation and market principles within the overall framework of the Energy Conservation Act with the primary objective of reducing intensity of the Indian economy. You can see more about this Bureau of Energy Efficiency in the website www.beeindia.government.in. Energy Conservation Act 2001, the salient features of this will be discussed. The efficient use of energy and its conservation is the cost effective option to maintain the gap between demand and supply. Government of India enacted this Energy Conservation Act 2001 and the features of this act are need to get energy audits conducted by accredited energy auditors and implement techno economics viable recommendation to lay down minimum energy consumption standards and labeling for identified appliances, equipment 
and norms for industrial processes for energy intensive industries. Formulation of energy consumption codes at industries to comply with norms of specific energy consumption fixed. Industries to submit report on steps taken to comply with norms and provision of penalties and adjudication. The evaluation of self-regulatory system with the BEE acting as a facilitator so that consumers would regulate on their own with a view to save energy. Energy conservation building codes are applicable to new buildings having connected load of 500 kilowatt or more. These are the features of Energy Conservation Act 2001. Now, what are the measures that we can take to conserve energy at domestic sector? Like installation of LEDs or CFL lamps, use maximum daylight, turn off lights during day and use daylight as much as possible, energy audit for industries, use efficient energy appliances, carpooling, driveless, walk more. These are small, small tips. Switch off the appliances when not in use, planting the shady landscapings, energy efficient windows, that is double panel windows and other vinyl frames are much better than single pane windows. Choosing correct blinds can save on our power bills. Other energy conservation measures are creating awareness. Zero energy balance is the process of re-evaluating and retrofitting manufacturing and commercial operations so that they can harvest and store energy as well as take and replace it with a grid to relieve brown out stresses. Use of alternative power is one of the most important energy conservation technique because almost all of the transition models require that the existing process be upgraded or replaced to more energy efficient models. This helps in reducing the pressure on just one resource and distributes the same to others. Cap and trade agreements. Cap and trade agreements limit the usage of raw materials and also regulate the pollution which is caused by industries manufacturing goods. Such agreements are not directly related to energy conservation, but they affect the core, they legalize the process and help industries to pay attention to the environment and its limited resources. Some of the government initiatives towards the energy conservations include Bachat Lamp Yojana, that is BLY. It encourages the energy well-organized and high-quality CFLs as a replacement for the radiant bulbs in household. It targets replacement of about 400 million incandescent bulbs in use, of the, use in the country for saving of 4,000 megawatt electricity demand and a reduction of about 24 million tons of carbon dioxide emission every year. It is unlike stages of operation many other states like uh, Punjab, Haryana, Andhra, Orissa, Chhattisgarh, Madhya Pradesh, Uttar Pradesh, Uttarakhand, Rajasthan, Goa, West Bengal, Tamil Nadu and Delhi. Another scheme of the government was Unat Chula Abhiyan. It is a program launched by the Ministry of New and Renewable Energy, which started during the 2013-14 period. The objective of this scheme was to progress and organize enhanced biomass cookstuffs for providing cleaner cooking energy solutions in rural, semi-urban and urban areas using biomass as the fuel for cooking. To mitigate work of women and children using outdated chula for cooking. To, mo to moderate the climate change by reducing the black carbon and other emissions subsequent from burning biomass for cooking. And the recent scheme is the National Program for LED based home and street lighting. The incentiveness is part of the government's effort to spread the message of energy productivity in the country. LED bulbs have more lifespan about 50 times more than regular bulbs and that is regular means incandescent bulbs and 8 to 10 times that of CFLs and accordingly it provides both energy and cost saving in the medium term. In, to, in 2016 March, approximately 100 cities is targeted of installing LED bulbs for domestic and street lighting of the all project. The assist annual savings from households in Delhi per LED bulb is around rupees 162 and it has a warranty of 3 years. Energy conservation at home, you can follow these steps like switch off electric appliances including light and fans while leaving a home, leaving a room, replace traditional chalks of tube lights with electronic chalks, they consume one third energy, keep lights and fixers to adjust the amount of lighting according to your needs, clean and dirt free, dust and dirt, reduce lighting levels as much as 30 percentage reduction, use dimmer switch use light colors for the walls, this reduce lighting requirement by up to 40%, replace old fan regulators with electronic regulators as they restrain the overuse of electricity, 
use of refrigerator of the size your family needs. Oversized refrigerator means more power consumption and small precautions like opening the fridge door frequ less frequently and defrosting regularly help to reduce the energy consumption. We can also conserve the energy at the workplace by using the carpool instead of individual cars. The Petroleum Conservation Research Association PCRA, is a registered society set up under the aegis of Ministry of Petroleum and Natural Gas. It's a non-profit organization. It's a national government agency engaged in promoting energy efficiency in various sectors of economy. It helps the government in proposing policies and strategies for petroleum conservation aimed at reducing excessive dependence of the country on oil requirement. You can get more details about this from the website www.pcracompetitions.org. As per PCRA, some fuel saving tips are stop the leakages immediately. Loss of one drop of diesel per second costs you over 2000 liters every year. Correct lubricant is also important. Use the standard grade oil and save up to 2% in fuel consumption. Check tire pressure regularly. It's safe on diesel consumption and the tire life. Check cleanliness of air cleaner and change oil air filter periodically. Without an air cleaner, ring wear shoots up 115 times. Use filters of good quality and replace them at recommended intervals. Improper alignment leads to wobbling, extra diesel consumption and reduced tire life. Drive between 45 to 55 km per hour. Drive slow and steady. The faster you go, the more wind resistance your vehicle will face. If you go at speeds above 60 km per hour, you will waste petrol. Tests on Indian cars prove that you can get up to 40% extra mileage at 45 to 55 km per hour is against 80 km per hour. So far, we have seen the energy conservation may be viewed as a new source of energy, having less investment and short reimbursement period. Energy conservation is a long way bridge, long way bridge between the demand and supply of energy. There is a need to keep a proper check on energy efficiency standards and it should be set up for all major equipments. The energy conservation can be achieved by implementing various new techniques and by imparting energy education at different levels. So in this module, we have learned what is the meaning of energy conservation, that is conserving the energy without compromising on the quality of the energy usage. We have seen the, what are the benefits of energy conservation, what are the different principles of energy conservation, different approaches of energy conservation. We have also seen some of the tips that we, we can follow at home, at our office, at our at industrial level to conserve the energy. Thank you.